And after rebukes comes what? Repentance. And God said, and the, and the scripture say, and they repented. He says, and therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of the enemies who vexed them. And in the time of their trouble, when you vex them, in the time of their trouble, when they what? When they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. According to thy manifold mercy, thou gavest them saviors. Now here in verses 27 or, or 27a, they rebuked. Or 27 or, or, or 27a, they were, uh, they were up under the rebuke of God. 27b, they were under the repentance. And 27c came the restoration. We see in the verses 26 through verse 27, we see all four of the templates. Rebellion in verse 26, rebuking in 27a, repentance in 27b, and restoration in 27c. Listen, let's look at the, the rebuke. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vexed them. They are being rebuked. Are we being vexed tonight? Maybe, uh, maybe that we are, we, are, 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 we are the second stage of this template here. It says there is rebellion and there is rebuke. And in the time of their trouble, here come repentance. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, when they cried, when they repented unto thee, then you done what? Then you restored. Thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. And now in verses 26 through verses 27, we see truly that how that those or that template is laid across these verses. We see rebellion. We see rebuke. We see repentance. And we see restoration. And you can take those three steps and you can lay them all the way over the Bible. And I used to, well, Nehemiah talked. Let's see what 2 Chronicles says. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verses 13. And we're still talking about rebellion, rebuke, repentance, and restoration. And as I talk, look at your life and say, which state am I in? Am I, in, am, I, am I in rebellion? Am I in rebuking state? Am I in repentance? Or am I in restoration? You ain't going to be in all two of them at one time. You will be in one or the other. You are either going to be in a state of rebellion. You're, you're going to be in a state of being rebuked. You're, you're going to be in a state of be all repentance after that he you know, whooped your while. Or you're going to be in a state of restoration where that he restoring all that he have taken from you. Now let's look at let's look at Chronicles uh, uh, Second Chronicles chapter seven, and begin in verse thir uh, thirteen is our key. But I'm going to bounce up there, and it says, verse eleven. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord. Now Solomon had finished building the house of the Lord, and all that came. Uh, 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 thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord, and the king's his house. And all that came unto Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord. And in his own house, he prosperous, effected. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. Now, uh, now, now you, you, you got to watch this closely. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place for an house of sacrifice Solomon I heard your prayer and this house that you build is going to be a house of sacrifice and it says now verses 13 verses 13 is talking about rebellion God already knew what they was going to do. He said, Solomon, this house here is going to be a house of sacrifice. 
when they rebelled, when they rebelled, verses 13, they not already rebelled. Verses 13 picks up, they already done rebelled. He says that, that this is going to be how. Now they have already rebelled. After rebellion comes what? Rebuke. Verse 13 is God is rebuking them. He says, Solomon, when after they have rebelled, I know that they're going to do this. Say, if I shut up heaven, that there will be no rain. They already done. They have already rebelled. Now I'm rebuking. He said, if I shut up heaven so that there will be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. Pestilence. This verse, is, verse 13 is a verse of rebuking. They have already rebelled. Uh, uh, that, uh, that's a foregone conclusion with God. He, he didn't even talk about the rebellion part. He jumped right into the rebuking part. Because he know that it was a foregone conclusion that they going to rebel. So he did not even have to spend time in talking about their rebelliousness. He, started, he picked the rack up and talking about how he is going to rebuke them. When they rebel, I'm going to do what? I am going to shut up heaven that there will be no rain. When they rebel against me, that I'm going to command the locusts to devour the land. When they rebel against me, I'm going to send pestilence among my people. It's a foregone conclusion that they're going to rebel, and this is my rebuke that I'm going to do. And then comes verses 14a. After there's a rebuke and there comes a what? A repentance. This verse here, verses of uh, verses 2 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 7 and verses 14 is a promise. It is a divine promise, one that not to strike fear against us, but one of a promise, one that uh, uh, one that's showing that God is going to do something here. He said, now, if they repent, they know they've been rebuked. If my people, now he's talking about the, the repenting part. He said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, upon the spirit of repentance and pray and seek my face and twat and turn. Repentance means what? To turn away from and turn from their wicked ways. Then what? Then will I hear from heaven and will do what? Then will I hear from heaven. Here come verse 14a come the repentance. Verse 14 become the restoration. 14b says, after they repent, then will I do what? Then will I hear from heaven. When are you going to hear? When they repent it. Then will I hear from heaven and what? And start restoring them once again. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, this is the good part. He said, now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. He said, when they come, I know they're going to rebel and I know I'm going to whip them down. But if they come in this place, in this place and repent, I'm going to hear from heaven and I'm going to heal the land. That's what he promised Solomon. He said, Solomon, or, or, or the temple ain't nothing but a place of repentance. God said, when they rebel and I rebuke and they repent, where at? In this place. And, and, and now he had made the church just like the temple. You got to come to church and repent. You can do it at home all you want to do. You can ride in the car. All, because when you repent in the car, all you, 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 you're going to do is cry, bust out and cry. When you wash and dish it and repent, the only thing you're going to do is bust out and cry. But when you come to church and repent, that's a different story. You feel different. You act different. 
Sometimes you run and cry and holler because that is the place that God said that I will hear from heaven. God always has a place designated for you to come and repent. And he told Solomon, he said, Solomon, this house here, I know they ain't going to do right. They're going to rebel. I'm going to shut up heaven from them. I'm going to send locusts in. I'm going to do all I'm going to send pestilences in. Oh, but when they turn from their wicked ways and repent, where at? In this house. Then will I hear from heaven. And then will I heal their land. And then he said, for now my eyes shall be opened. And mine ears attended unto the prayers that is made where at? Where at? Home? In the car? On the job? At Walmart? Where at? In this place that have been designated as the house of God. That's why Jesus said, upon this rock I'm going to build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Church is, when you say the word church, it's just like when you say the word fish. There ain't no such thing as fishes. There ain't no such thing as churches. It's just a church. Meaning all of these little mom and pops and cathedrals, the church. You don't say in these fishes, you say fish. Fish include everything that swims in the water. And church, it ain't no churches. That's why he didn't say upon this rock I'm going to be a churches. But he said church, that means every church that is upon in the name of Jesus Christ, when you repent in that place, then will I hear from heaven. And then, then, then I will heal the land. That's why a lot of them is still going through. God, one thing about God that I, got, that I find out, he'll whip you until you come to this place. <laughs> God will whip you until you come to the church and repent because he said in this place in this place I'll hear from heaven and I will heal your land. What state are you in? Are you in the state of rebellion? Are you in the state of rebuking? Are you in the state of repentance? Or are you in the state of respiration? Now we talked about the Old Testament. Let's go in, into the New and let's start talking about us. Amen. The present day believer. I'm going to call this the present day believer. Their rebelliousness. Their repent, rebuking. Their repentance. And their restoration. Amen. If, let's look at 2nd second, Corinthians. 2nd Corinthians. 2nd Corinthians chapter 12. 2nd Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians. Amen. 2 second, uh, second Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 21a. Now we're talking about what? Rebellion. So now let's see what these uh, Christians are going to be doing. Are we going to be walking the straight and narrow? Only the children of Israel rebelled and will rebuke. And then they repented, and then God restored them. Are we born again believers going to fall upon that template? Let's see what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 21, it says, and Paul is talking, saying, and lest when I come where again, and my God will what humble me among you, and that I shall what be well men that have done what? Sin already. Sin me what? Rebellion. Here Paul saying, and who is he talking about? He is talking about newly born again believers. He said, when I come back again, lest when I come again, my, my God will armor me among you, and that I shall be well. Many which have sinned already and have not done what? And have not repented of their what? And this is their rebelliousness. What is their rebelliousness, Paul? Uncleanness, fornication, lasciviousness, and all things that, uh, that falls up under that group. 
they are being in a state of rebellion. Born again believers can be in a state of rebellion. Are we in that state of rebellion? Of uncleanness, fornication, lasciviousness, or everything that tied in with those particular things. If you are in that, then you are in a state of rebellion. He said, and, that, and, and, and then once that you have rebelled, then God going to have to do what? God, God going to have to do what? Well, let's, let, let Hebrew tell us about that then. Amen. We're going to let the Bible talk to us tonight. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 5 and 6. Now, we don't rebel. We don't sin. We don't girlfriend, boyfriend. We don't duck and die. We don't smoke the little grass. We don't do all kinds of little things. And now we think, and we think it ain't about sin, but you got away from me, but you didn't get away from God. <laughs> I ain't seen you when you got that nigga bag, but God did. And now you're not rebelled, and now God is getting ready to do some rebuking now. God is getting, getting ready to deal with you now, brother. God is getting ready to deal with you, sister. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12 and verses 5 and 6 says what? And ye have forgotten what? The exaltation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son do what? Despise not thou what? The chastening of the God. When does God chasten you? When you rebel. Despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. What, and then what does it say? Nor what? Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Now why in the world are you crying when you know what you done done? Because when your mama whoop you, she ain't got to, a dad or mama whoop you, they ain't got to tell you not one thing what you done. The first thing you gonna holler, I ain't gonna do it no more. <laughs> they, they ain't even saying what they whooping you for, but you know. I ain't gonna do it no more, mama. I ain't gonna do it no more. She ain't even saying what you done. When God start chasing you, you are gonna holler, I ain't gonna do it no more. Why? It's because you know the rebellion that they have done and God got to chastise you. And verses uh, 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 6 says, <laughs> excuse me, for whom, for whom the Lord loveth, he what? For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scrounges every son whom he what? Received. Whom God loveth, he chasteneth and scrounges every son whom he receiveth. Will that son whom he loved, will that son or daughter whom he have received rebel against God? Yes, he will. Amen. We have just read it. He said through lasciviousness, all, all of those things that were spelled in Second Chronicles, you will fall right upon those particular things. And that's why he have to whoop you. Amen. God just, just doesn't work. He said that if you sin and there's no chastisement, you are not of God. If that you smoke that little bag and wake up in the morning and, and there ain't no Lord ain't going to do it no more, come out of you, you are not of his. If you wake up in that next day, say, I ain't going to do this no more. Because the Lord knows how to whoop you. You say, I ain't going to do this no more. But if you wake up the next morning and start making plans to do it some more, you better check yourself and see if you are a child of God. Because he said, whom I love it, I'm going to whip you. Whom I have called, I am going to chastise. Amen. And those are those that in the state of being rebuked. Are you in that state tonight? Are you being rebuked? Maybe perhaps God is rebuking you for some rebelliousness that you have done. You don't, you don't have to tell me, uh, but you know about it. You know you don't, uh, uh, I ain't going to do it no more. Just, just the Lord, I ain't going to do it no more. Let everybody just say, I ain't going to do it no more. I ain't going to do it no more. Amen, because we all know what that we may have done. Now God is rebuking and God is chastising. And after the rebuking and after the chastisement comes what? Repentance. Let's let the Bible tell us about repentance. Hebrews chapter 6 and verses 5. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 5 and verses 6. Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 6 
and verses 5 and 6, we see that born-again believers can do what? Rebel. Born-again believers can rebel. Born-again believers got to do what? Born-again believers are going to be, be what? Rebuked. And then born-again believers are going to have to do what? Repent. Verses 6 say, and if they shall what? Fall away to do what to them? To renew them again unto what? Unto repentance. If a brother or sister, they have tasted the grace and the good gift of God. If they say, he said, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing that they crucified themselves to the son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Here that God is calling those that have been rebuked, those that have been rebelled. Now God is calling you unto repentance because that you are put in God to an open shame. That's why that we, God wants us to repent. That's why God wants us to turn away from, from our unrighteousness. Because a born again believer falls in unrighteousness, they put God to an open shame. Their salvation is secure, but they put God to an open shame, and it makes others that don't want no part of your God. He said that that's why that we must restore such as one, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing that they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open front, open shame. That's why born-again believers must be repenting. Repent where at? In the house of God, the place that calls itself a church of the living God. And then after that we have repented, God is going to start what? Restoring. And let's see what Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1 says concerning restoration. Amen. Galatians chapter 6 and verses 1. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual do what? Restore such a one, what? In the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou be tempted. And, and we want to look at just a, a, a 1A of that verse. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. We see that we fall in four states in our Christian walk. We fall in the state of rebellion, and we fall in the state of rebuking, and we fall in the state of repentance, and we fall in the state of restoration. What state are you in tonight? Are you in the state of rebellion? Are you rebelling against God? Or that you have already rebelled, and God is chastising you? Are you up under? the rebuking of God or that if that you have been rebelled and you have been rebuked now you are repenting have you repented have repented have you turned from your wicked ways have you turned from the thing that brought displeasure unto God and brought him to an open shame or that are you upon the spirit of restoration and when God he said whom I loveth I chasten it the Bible tells us that, uh, that when we go through these dire temptations he said, after that we have suffered a while, after God have beat us a while, then it brings forth what? The peaceable fruit of righteousness so that we see that we can spread this template from Genesis to Revelation. And everybody, the Bible is divided into four sections, rebellion, rebuke, repentance, and restoration. And that is what the book of Revelation is all about. The book of Revelation, Genesis started out with our rebellion and Revelation started back with our restoration. Genesis saw us being ran out of the Garden of Eden and a flame and sword God the way. But Revelation saw us as seen a new heaven and a new earth because the former things have passed away. He said, I seen what? I seen a new river and I seen that tree that tree of life and, and that on both sides of the river that bearing 12 manners of fruit 
Revelation shows us that we are going to be restored once again. And that restoration has been done by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'm asking you tonight, my, my born-again believers, which station in your Christian walk are you in? Rebellion, rebuking, repentance, or restoration? Amen. Let's bow our heads. Praise the Lord. Most gracious Father, we thank you. And we pray that we have said something that would give us an understanding and something that would make us take inventory of our lives. And no matter what state that we're in, we don't have to stay in that state because the last state is where we all want to be, and that's the state of restoration. Continue to bless us and strengthen us. In your name we're praying. Amen. 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 Come on, give God another round of applause. Amen. If all the members was here this evening, prayer first would be overcrowded. Because if they would determine what state that they are in, out of those four, hey, you're somewhere. And that lets us know after hearing that message tonight, amen, we'll need somebody at the church all the time. So you can come in and kneel down at this place and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Amen. Thank God for Reverend Cooper doing an awesome job. Amen. That's why I love to take them to Dallas and sharpen them up. Amen. And bring them back. Amen. So you can be fed.